Hi, I've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Sunday, June 2nd, and first of all, I want to offer my condolences to those who lost loved ones on Friday in the tornadoes in Oklahoma. I was here for those. We went chasing after them. Uh, some of the storms ended up chasing us, and it was a little bit of a scary day for everyone and a truly sad day for those in Oklahoma City, so thoughts and prayers are with them. But here in the tropics, we are now in the hurricane season for the Atlantic, which started yesterday, and already we have something to watch a system that we've been really expecting since early May uh, when we knew the MJO pulse was going to come across the Pacific and provide upward motion in this region of the world in the Western Caribbean and uh, sure enough here after tracking it for the last month or so nearly a month anyway we now have a system uh, developing our first real potential uh, for something tropical to come out and affect uh, the southeastern United States and it's a broad area very typical for early June we've got a monsoon low that's developing over the Yucatan Peninsula and you can see the elongated area of heavy rain uh, that has been running for several days now even without the low pressure fully developed we've had rainfall extending from Central America northeastward through the northern Caribbean islands and into the Bahamas and that will continue during the next few days uh, continuing to dump rain on them if we zoom in on this uh, we can see that uh, this is a very broad uh, disorganized region which is again typical it will take days to organize and it may not even organize that much but right now surface observations indicate that we probably have a very weak low here another weak low here uh, making up the monsoonal gyre um, elongated south southwest and north northeast along the Yucatan Peninsula and then we have the potential for a third low to develop here north of the Yucatan Channel there is a mid-level disturbance here now uh, which is developing in response to the convection there and a short wave moving to the north um, and but this is the location that we're going to be watching because this is where uh, lows will want to form because if you look at the low level flow we have strong trade winds coming in from the southeast and then they're curving around to easterly or east northeasterly on the northern side and then notice the wind speed is fast along here but the wind speeds are a lot weaker in here and uh, lows like to form along pressure gradients which in turn create wind speed gradients um, and and that enhances vorticity. So when you have fast flowing, curving flow here, uh, you're going to try to form low pressure here is usually where it likes to form. So this northern lobe is likely to develop and uh, the global models do indicate that this will become an area of low pressure that rotates a little bit to the northwest uh, during the next two days. And this is again uh, expected given that we have an elongated area of low pressure here. They generally behave in such a way where they start rotating a little bit counterclockwise, kind of like the Fujiwara effect if you are familiar with what that is. Um, so this northern lobe will likely rotate a little bit to the west and will get low pressure starting to consolidate a little bit uh, just to, to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula. And this is probably where we're going to start focusing the activity in the southern Gulf of Mexico during the next couple of days. Now here's the water vapor imagery of the United States right now and you can't see much of our system at the moment uh, but what you can see is a lot of high speed upper level winds associated with the subtropical jet stream moving across the southern gulf providing lots of wind shear. This jet will be moving a little bit to the north closer to the north gulf coast over the next couple of days in response to the convection to the south and the short wave moving uh, to the north right now coming to the Mississippi Valley. However, wind shear is going to remain moderate and the pattern is sheared enough that the system will likely never have anything on its western side and uh, it will probably uh, be all to the east or the north of the system, the convection that develops with it, and we're likely to see a bare center of low pressure with nothing directly over it um, as it develops. Um, but uh, right now, this short wave as it comes through the Mississippi Valley is going to be lifting out to the northeast and is not far enough south to grab this thing. So it's going to be meandering around north of the Yucatan Peninsula through at least Tuesday. And uh, this short wave will leave, but this next one in the Pacific Northwest right now is going to be diving in towards the Mississippi Valley on Thursday. And when this happens, uh, that's probably going to be the one that catches this system and starts to bring it northeast, likely over the Florida Peninsula. Sometime on Thursday night, there are some differences in the models on timing right now. Um, the steering flow is rather weak, uh, but it looks like somewhere around Thursday night, plus or minus 12 hours perhaps, um, and if that changes, of course, uh, that will be updated. But that's what is expected right now, and it will likely accelerate northeastward and be absorbed into the trough, perhaps even moving up towards New England, that's what the European shows, and could bring precipitation right up the entire length of the eastern seaboard. Um, but what we're going to be really worried about is Florida. 
This is the GFS run from 18Z for Thursday, 96 hours out, showing a pretty weak low uh, moving in towards Tampa Bay, but you can see the very heavy precip associated on with it on the eastern side of the low moving into Florida, and this will gradually move northeastward across uh, the peninsula and accelerate as it does so. This is the Canadian from this morning on Thursday night showing a strong tropical storm south of the Florida panhandle. This is overdone, and the Canadian has been overdone and is known to be overdone with these systems and uh, this is probably unrealistic deepening and this model is being discounted at this time. It is the only one showing true tropical development from this system. And here's the European. Uh, this is 72 hours out from the 12Z run showing broad low pressure north of the Yucatan and uh, here is Thursday 96 hours out you can see it starts to move towards the northeast and again notice the pressure gradient here this is where it's trying to develop because we have these closely spaced isobars this is where the low pressure will try to develop and feed back here it's probably not going to be able to do very much uh, there's not going to be much time for it so again tropical development chances are looking fairly slim with this but you can see as it comes across Florida by Friday it does deepen a little bit and by this time it's probably being influenced by this upper level trough coming across the Mississippi uh, which will probably be exhibiting uh, imparting baroclinic processes onto the storm to help it deepen and this may not this will not be truly tropical deepening if it does so um, but it will be coming up close to the southeast US coastline and bringing heavy rain with it all through this area and that's going to be the main concern and then here's day six and it moves up even towards New England here, phasing with this trough. Um, could bring uh, heavy weather all the way up to New England, but this is a little bit farther out and a little more uncertain at this time. Now here's the GFS ensembles. Uh, the mean sea level pressure and these red numbers indicate low centers uh, being depicted by different ensemble members from the GFS and do you see them here east of Jacksonville and the reason I show this is to compare it to the European which for the same general time period has the low pressure strung out a little closer to the southeastern coastline uh, once it crosses Florida closer to Georgia and South Carolina coastline and I do think this has a little bit of a better handle on the exact position because as the first short wave back here uh, moves out to the northeast uh, we're expecting height rises in the vicinity of Bermuda with the ridge building here and uh, I think this is likely to force this a little closer uh, to the actual coastline than being farther offshore which is what the GFS shows it's not that major of a model discrepancy uh, but I do think the European has a little better handle of having it in here uh, very close to the coastline and that's where my track takes it right now and uh, here is the GFS showing the massive precip coming through Florida. This is in excess of 20 inches near Tampa Bay here in the yellow colors, which may or may not be overdone, but I think at least 10 inches can be expected across much of the central and southern parts of the Florida Peninsula, and this will be the he where the heaviest rain falls and could be a concern for flooding. A very typical early season tropical event, which brings a lot of water but not a lot of wind and that's going to be the theme with this system and then there's also bands of uh, precip that are likely to develop from Georgia through the Carolinas and even up through Virginia and perhaps farther up the eastern seaboard as the upper trough to the north uh, that will be arriving on Thursday and Friday starts to interact with the system baroclinically which means rain will probably start forming on its northern side as well as its eastern side and so rainfall could be um, an issue for the other southeastern states as well as Florida. But Florida will by far get the biggest impact from the system. Again, water, not wind, will be the theme with this. Very typical early season system. I think tropical development chances are rather slim with it, and uh, we are not particularly likely to get Andrea from it. But we do have an area of low pressure from the tropics that has to be monitored this week. And, and maybe with us through the end of this week, um, by this weekend, we'll still be moving up the eastern seaboard. So we will be dealing with a lot of interesting weather from this system. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.